legally sanctions uh, absolution from votes, which is something which oh, Yahweh sorry. does not do, even if it means a few people are going to die. Gibeonites, the point I raised, the point was Gibeonites, Canaanites were supposed not to be touched purely because an oath was given. Now, let me go back to a few points you raised. Thankfully, Shabir, quite early in the conversation, thankfully, you said we could end the conversation here because you said obviously Islamic Allah is different than the Bible. The only, the only, the only, the only, the only, Shabir, no, you're not, you're not supposed to. No, no, no. Shabir, no, Arul, okay, let me speak and then start. Do not put words into my mouth which I have not said. You did that with those two brothers. I noticed. One yeah. second, one second, Arun. Yeah, viewers, I, uh, one, viewers would second. notice again, Shabir. One second, one second. The point you made. Look, the viewers, I appreciate and I respect the viewers, whoever they may be. But what you are doing is very, is being very conniving. And that is not very Christian-like. Okay? Let me say, Shabir, one second, one you second, are not Arun, my judge second. here. Let's get back to and my turn. You my judge. Let me say what I want And to I say. never judged you. I, I made, I, I let you make your point when you Arun, were making Arun, points. Listen. I said to you at the start, I want a decent conversation. You are making too many snide remarks and I am aware of them. One second, let me Shabir. finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. I, am, I don't come here to have these kinds of banter. I come here to have a reasonable conversation. Now, you must understand something you seem to not be able to understand. If I have given my response, yep. You then second, wait second, for me second, to speak? One second, no. When I have given my response, it is entirely your decision to say whether I answered it or not. However, after I have given my response, I asked a question. That is what you should respond to first before you go on to your other points. That is what you are now, dictating. Is it, that no, is no, not no, true. It's only Shabir, I let you speak. Can I speak now? It's my turn. You just seem to be offended. No, no, I'm not offended. So, I just think you are being very conniving. Thank you. Let everyone oh, judge. Sure. Let, let people judge. And let a, let an overall I God judges overall. Are you doing Shabir, this? are you doing this for the people of Korea? Shabir, Shabir, come on. Why did you bring the cameras? Hey? Why did you bring the cameras? Why did you wait for the cameras? Because I want people to listen. I you don't do, seem to I, want to do I that do, for some reason. A, I don't know why. I do, but in a reasonable way. Shabir, like Shabir, let, let, let's not do this. Uh, this uh, uh, we, we we don't. I mean, right. can you just go ahead? So. Anyway, and yeah, all the deception Don't worry showing. Don't about us. Worry about you. No, no, that's fine. So, you somewhere in your response, you essentially said we could end the conversation here, and you said if the Quran goes against the the Bible, which seems to be the case here, Islamic Allah legally sanctions absolution from oath, and here in the Bible. Yahweh thinks even in the worst of your situations you still need to keep your oath that seems to be the polar opposite difference and you suggested when we encounter such a difference the only recourse you would have is to suggest that the Quran is the uh, is the one which supersedes you said you said the biblical revelation is has been superseded by the Quran according to the Quran I think you mentioned surah chapter 5 I think that is what you said I didn't put words into your mouth you can check out your recording that was your explanation I'd like to thank you at least for saying that you haven't got any other valid explanation for the fact that there is polar opposite characteristic between the Islamic Allah and Yahweh clearly showing up there you then also went on to make a remark about the Quran talking about us having to be just and so on and good and so on. You made that at the start. My problem is this. If a person makes 10 truthful statements and 2 untruthful statements by simple convention of language and practice, we would call him a liar. Okay. Not a truthful man. Okay. The moment you have one immoral attribute and in this case that being absolution of oaths i.e. not having to keep your word if that is what is coming from Islamic Allah we could go through all other attributes a bit later the moment we see this we already see an immoral Islamic Allah okay. who can't be reconciled with the Yahweh 
of the Bible. You also said Islamic Allah might have suggested this. I, I don't think you made this point quite in this way, but you were talking about whatever Islamic Allah said was for our benefit, not for his benefit, not for the benefit of the Creator and so on. Absolutely, that is not the point here. I'm not asking who benefits from what. All that I'm asking is, what is the characteristic of Islamic Allah versus the characteristic of Yahweh? Islamic Allah seems to be quite casual with, even for simple things about this lady and that lady, even for simple things like that, he seems to be quite all right with people not keeping their word. I'm sorry, and I'm no, saying no, Yahweh does not me, allow that to happen. Okay, no problem. In other words, I'll, once again, I'll give, I'll come, I'll come. You, you are taking too much time. But That's making just, sensible comments it. about the topic we're talking about. Islamic Allah is polar opposite to Yahweh. Okay. You haven't right. given I, a reasonable right. explanation as to why this okay. is the case. Can I could suggest, if you just give me one more minute, I could yeah, suggest no. why be this fair, is the case. Uh, One minute, no, and you no, can. No, no. It's my I could, I could suggest why this is the case, and the and the and the suggestion that I have no. is, the God of the Bible, with all his signs and wonders, mm. is the only true God okay. who cares about morality. Yeah. Islamic right. Allah, on the other hand, doesn't seem to have a proper standard of morality, yeah. okay. and in this particular case, okay, not caring to right. stick to his word. Okay. Therefore, I earnestly invite you to come to the one who has a superior okay. moral standard, yeah. Yahweh. Yeah. Islamic Allah yeah. Yeah. would not even keep his word in regards to you going okay. to heaven. Forget about him. Right. Come back okay. to Jesus. Okay. Now, you see, Arun, many, you made so many points. But the ones that I would really like to respond to are the ones that are appropriate to the conversation. I said to you very clearly, as, as, uh, here, here, sorry. Here, here, sorry. Yeah? My court is getting heavy. Who's this? Right. It's all, uh, oh. Right, Arul? You see, you said something quite important. Yeah? You said, if a person tells eight, li eight truths and two lies, you, according to your standard of the Bible, would consider him a liar. Normal convention. No, I was going to come to that. One second. And you also said that, conventionally speaking, that is how one would be viewed. Okay, no problem. I asked you, and I even told you, and I'll repeat it again just in case you missed it. When you referred to that particular surah, I then said in response, look, in Surah 4, 135, this is what it says about how we have to be just even against ourselves. Now, what you seem to have totally missed is that if there is any issue about the suspension or the absolution of oaths, there is a specific reason to it. I think it totally missed you. I then referred to N294 of the 613 commandments as evinced by the Jewish scholars, they say that it is not a sin if you are going to be accused of a sin which was done under duress. Now, I then said to you, wait a minute, Arun, if you are saying eight truths and two untruths makes a person by convention a liar, I then said to you, okay, Ezekiel chapter 14 verse 9 says that God directly deceived now Never does. Whoa, 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 whoa. one second one second god directly deceived i i i'll read it again for the purpose of clarification show me it, whoa, whoa, just one, because you brought whoa, that one up second, one just second, because one you brought second, that up shabir uh, show arul, me one arul, person arul, in the bible arul, who god deceived arul, one person arul, please calm down calm down i didn't interject now i've told you very clearly I am asking you, and I get brother. Is there a problem? Are you talking to me or you can speak? Oh, okay, okay, that's fine. Ezekiel 14:9, brother. I know I'm disturbing you, but can you just pull up, pull up the word invade again? Right? I and you see now it it will make sense to you when I said that. Look, if we wanted to end this conversation with one statement, and there are a few others which I haven't even referred to yet, one statement. Here, chapter 14, verse 9 of the book of Ezekiel is very clear, okay? I want you to tell me, when it says here, 
I am Jehovah. And when the prophet is in vain, so that he speaks a word, I, Jehovah, have invaded that prophet. What does the word invade mean? Persuade someone to do something by means of deception or flattery. Now, does it say here that the Creator, Jehovah, according to the biblical understanding, deceived this particular individual? Yes or no? Shabir, no, I am no, willing a, a to have question. a long conversation. I know, question. but yes irrelevant no? to Arul, the conversation Arul, now. Arul, Arul, one second. I'll tell you how it is relevant. You need to expand your understanding. Yeah? You see, Arul, if according to your understanding and your view which you hold strongly, Arul, you said very clearly, a person who says eight truths and two lies conventionally is called a liar. I'm saying, listen, you are referring to two Samuels. You are referring to how oaths must be held to. I'm saying to you, wait a minute, how in the world are you trusting something where the very author is saying that he is a deceiver. Now, I'm asking you a simple question. According to this verse, Arul, does it say God deceived this person? Yes or no? Uh, Shabir, is that your turn? No, I'm no. asking first and then I can go forward. Yes or no? Is it saying My response, Shabir, is clear. Yahweh of the Bible, I have read my Bible carefully right through and I can challenge you God of the Bible does not deceptively act period okay Arul period Arul now can I I'm can sorry, I no, please no, no, no. also suggest no that's an Arul, ocean Arul, my friend. you can hide in Arul, which I don't Arul, want to happen Arul you can are drowned we? in it I am not even hiding that's Listen fine to me, Arul. can we please Listen, come back I have come back I, d I don't think you are conceiving of what I'm saying is I'll simplify it a bit more Listen, Arul. I said to you, if you are going to accuse or rather suggest that the, the day allows willy-nilly according to you to break up, I'm saying, wait a minute, I have explained to you, are you familiar with the 613 commandments as evinced by the Jewish scholars? Are you familiar with them? I am. You are. So in 294, where it says very clearly, one second, one second, where it says very clearly that, look, if a person sins under duress, they are not to be punished. Now, you see a rule, you need to expand your thinking. What I mean by that is that there are going to be reasons or certain actions that are going to be undertaken by people which were forced on them. So, for example, if somebody forces you or puts you under pain of death to deny the Creator and you deny the Creator, are you found guilty according to N294? The answer is no. I know you will not respond. Okay, now I'm asking you a simple question, Arul. According to your standard, this standard of keeping oaths even to death, as you said, I'm asking you a simple question based on that. According to the very same book, which is talking about the God that you believe in, which is apparently polar opposite, in Ezekiel 14.9 is saying very clearly, he deceives a person directly. I'm asking you a simple question, Arul, in the context of this moral aspect, do you agree that according to Ezekiel 14.9, here I'm reading it, it is saying God deceived this particular individual. Yes or no? Which individual? Do you want to read it? I thought you've read no, the Bible. I Here, know. Which I'll individual? Again. Do you have a specific I'll, I'll name it. there? I'll read, please, it. I'll, please I'll, bring I'll read it up. again. It actually says, I have deliberately deceived the prophet. Which which one? Does it matter now? It, it really matters. Oh, excellent. Let's go because, back. Because Let's, you see, excellent, excellent, this is what excellent. Samshi did the other day. No, no, no. no. This is what Samshi did the other day. Excellent. He brought in a case where uh, it, God hadn't deceived anyone. But because Samshi can't read beyond a particular ex word, ex not the entire statement. Excellent. The whole thing here yeah. is about what? Prophets. Which prophets? False prophets? Which ones? Here. False ones. Okay. Now, I'm asking... So which particular wait, 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 prophet is that second, talking about? What? Do you want the context as well? No problem. Which particular no, 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 no. prophet uh, is that talking about? I'm so glad you are asking me that. It means you have taken actually a step forward. Good. Now, but, now uh, one second, one second, one second. I'll let my you friend, finish and then I need to move friend, on now. No. Here it is. It is taking you and some of the elders of Israel at chapter 14, start, okay? It talks about them. You carry on reading it. 
here is the classic issue which you are now trying to have you got an answer shabir i'm giving you which the answer. which prophet I'm, was deceived i'm giving you the please answer. give I, me I, the answer i am giving you the answer okay i am telling you here when it comes all the way back to here the question that is being asked and you are now trying to avoid is simple i can you read yours as well no shabir i'm not, well? i'm not, i'm not i'm not oh, come i'm, on, not, I'm, not, I'm on. not here it is a very important i'm not here issue. to play okay, some some little games here i am here to deal with serious I'm trying moral to, but i think issues rather arul is having shabir, a problem my challenge it's in that regard it, it's a moral issue i'll tell you have you, have you finished one, now one second one second oh, no, no, i let I, you finish i asked you a very simple one three times i'm asking and i'll ask you again okay the whole of the chapter is there you can read it as well i'm here i'm telling you where it is talking about i jehovah am going to reply to him i jehovah have deceived that prophet and will swing my hand over him and rout him out the question you are asking will listen to your logic i am saying to you wait whether it's james john jesus muhammad arul shabir whoever the issue is not that the issue is does it say that he god is the one deceiving yes or no is i an end of your turn no i'm asking you no, no you you are asking me many questions i have asked you i've only asked you one does it For say here does it say here because you are not For answering you keep going all over no you I'm make your points you. and then let me respond please arul, arul, shabir you have been accustomed to having these kinds of discussions i don't have discussions like this i said a conversation and part of the conversation is that when a question is asked like you had asked me i responded to it i never I asked you such questions uh, i finished arul, 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 my arul, i presented arul, to you last, a case arul, for you to respond I'm saying, back okay i'll tell you what in two points number one i gave you a very clear indication of what the creator is saying to us if you want to misconstrue it that's entirely your decision about the quran in surah 66 so okay one second one second let me finish yeah i now am saying to you look whatever basis of morality you seem to hold as being superior from the bible i am saying to you look according to the standards of the bible everything unfortunately is a total fail why because this verse here which again you still are resisting and coming out with which prophet that no the issue is not who the person being at one second who the person being addressed is or ought to be the uh, the issue here is a simple one and i'm going to ask you one last time and i hope you have the courage to answer it says here i jehovah have deceived that can you prophet. get the definition again, now can i ask please. you one second can i ask you does it do you agree that here it says that jehovah deceived so uh, shabir you the the definition he brought up before yeah. us persuade not deceive persuade to do something yeah. that's the definition not deceive mm -hmm. persuade to do something by means of one of two things according to this definition one of two things one of them is deception and the other one is flattery that is the definition here now if you want to run now excuse me shabir shabir i am now answering before i'm not saying anything good thank answer, you answer. if you would listen please I'm listening my to point you. is this I can do two things my at the, same the, the reason the, good yeah. the reason i asked you for the name of the prophet there is not because i wanted to find who you think yahweh was deceiving but rather my point was because we disagree on the definition on the meaning of the statements that you are reading uh, i wanted us to go through the illustration of the example for us to clearly see yahweh of the bible does not deceive there was a particular case i had a discussion with with some she mm -hmm. where the illustration involved false prophets mm -hmm. yahweh himself true mm -hmm. prophet and a king uh -huh. if you take every single entity involved yeah. in that conversation mm -hmm. which some she thought god was deceiving yeah. none of them was deceived right every single one knew mm -hmm. that a lying spirit had gone out with lies 
and had spoken to false prophets. Okay. Every single one of them knew. Yeah. No deception involved. Some she could not even read the context entirely. He was sticking to one word here, one word there. And that seems to be what you are doing there. And that is where I wanted an illustration. Anyway, my point is this. The explanation you have given, what I want to discuss about today was about keeping oath. And the point there is Yahweh of the Bible sticks to his word no matter the cost. Arul. No matter the cost. Sorry, Islamic Arul. Allah. What are you saying? No, Islamic no, no, no. Allah. Hey, come on, you are not being fair now. Islamic Arul. Allah, on the other hand. Arul, let's go back to the word Surah in Surah 66, verses 1, 2, 3, if I could Arul, read. Let's go oh, back to prophet, the word why prohibit you that which Allah has made lawful for you, seeking to please your wives? What duress is involved here? No duress is involved. I'm not saying under duress you can lie. I I'm not saying under duress you can break your oath. I'm not suggesting that at all. Yahweh never suggests that to happen. But all that I'm saying is purely because you brought duress into the picture, I'm just clarifying to you clearly there is no duress involved. This is a domestic issue between a man and a couple of his wives. That seems to be the problem. No duress involved unless you're going to suggest Aisha threatened to kill Muhammad or some other Arul. wife of Prophet Muhammad threatened to kill him. If that is what you're going to suggest, Arul. that's fine. Allah has made lawful for you, lawful, yeah, yeah. legal for you, Arul. absolution from your oaths. And Allah is your protector. And it goes on to say, when the Prophet confided a fact to one of his wives and when she afterwards divulged it and Allah informed him of it, he made known part of it and passed over part. Yes. The, po the point here is, if you both turn to Allah repentant, what is repentant according to him? Yeah. Not having to keep your oath is repenting. Right. Okay. To me, that's a weird definition yeah. of repentance and that is a weird moral character yeah. which is of God. Okay. And therefore, my suggestion, right. Shabir, yeah. okay. is instead of you trying to get all your dictionaries uh, 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 and all that, uh, 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 I'm willing to have a long conversation. I'm willing to have a long conversation of whether Yahweh of the Bible is a deceiver or if Allah is the greatest of deceivers, Islamic Allah. I'm willing to have that long conversation, but not today. The right. point today is keeping oaths. Islamic Allah doesn't care to. He advances the idea of not keeping it. Yahweh wants people to keep it. He is the only true God. Islamic Allah either does not exist or is subhuman oh, in moral character. Arul, please stop reaching so much. Okay, listen. I, I said very quickly, we are going to conclude now. I think it's, yeah. I, all I said to Brother Arul was if the foundation is totally destroyed, then anything above it is just a pie in the sky, respectfully. Now, this one? This one? Okay. Now, here is what I said. We, what the Brother Arul tried, he tried a quick one and I don't blame him, he had to. He quickly asked you to bring up the thing, the definition. And he then used the other words, apart from deception, he used the other words which according to him may apply to that. And I said Ezekiel 14.9, I'm going to read it again. All I want you to do is respond now, okay? It's a very simple thing, okay? It says here, here, and if the prophet be deceived and speak a word, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. If, now, if, do you agree that the word here is deceived? If the prophet. The word used here is, is but deceived. the statement second, is second, much second. wider than one, the word one, one second, one and second, the, second, the meaning uh, of the uh, statement uh, uh, must be Arul, understood Arul, in the context Arul. of the passage. I'm so glad. You Arul. see, you, you must do it in the context. You must do it in the context. Yes, Yet wives, we, one second, one second, one second, keeping one second. it. One second. When it comes to Islam, as I had said earlier on, I said, look, you need to understand. Just reading like this doesn't work. However, what you cannot escape from right now is, does it say here, God deceived the prophet? I'm asking. Can you please make your point? I, the Lord, can you, can you what please? does I, the Lord, have deceived Can you, can you please make your point uh, Arul, I'm asking you a simple question. It's English. I, the Lord, have deceived. What does it mean? So, if I... What does it mean? 
Shabir, let's not play simple games here. The point, the I, fact I of the matter, the fact of the, the fact of the matter, the fact of the matter, Shabir. Respectfully, I would say one thing. We'll learn a bit more and then we'll have a conversation. Thank you very much. Yeah. But Shabir. Because, uh, one second. That's fine. Because, uh, I'm willing. I'm, 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 I ask a simple question and all I want is a simple answer before we conclude. Does it say, I the Lord deceive? That's not the nature of any conversation, if, Shabir. If. Does it say, I the Lord deceive? No, Shabir, yes. Shabir, yes. a simple point yes. here is that you, you don't seem to know how to read a statement in its context. Now, obviously, we disagree on this particular regard. I challenge you, I challenge you yeah. for a detailed debate. And when we do that, I encourage you to bring examples of a few people who God Yahweh deceived, right. and we could deal with I those detailed right. cases. No, in, yeah, that's fine. No, no, now, no, 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 no. I tell you no, what, no, you no, have, no, respectfully, no. you have said something very sensitive no, now. No. Listen, you know what you did? I, I, I'm, 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 I'm not asking you for your comment no, no, on your no. evaluation. Uh, you you, you seem to jump up and down uh, in terms I, I of your evaluation. I followed you. I'll go with you. Okay. Yeah, I said to you, Arul, you have come up with a very good idea now. Yes. Now, yeah? no, but no, before that, can Arul, we please no. can we please uh, finish, finish up what we are de Arul, doing we've now? We've already concluded. God is the a conclusion. According to the, Bible. the conclusion the is Islamic this Allah is, does yeah. not keep His word. Uh, Yahweh of the Bible opinion. keeps His word. Amen. This is not my opinion. This is straight from your Quran um, and straight Arul, from my Bible. How can it be when Ezekiel 49 no says he opinions opinion. involved? Yeah. Okay. About no deception, I am willing to have a long I'll conversation. No. I'll tell you what. When we do that, Arul. by all means, bring an example of a person who Yahweh deceived, Arul. and then we can see what right. the nature of the Arul. dynamic involved is, okay. and then talk about that. Okay, please. I'll tell you what we'll do. Uh, yeah, I'm going to conclude. Look, uh, I, I respectfully would say that anyone who has, and I don't mean this about you, anyone who has any logical approach, an intelligent approach to subject matter, would actually address the matter in detail, rather than doing what our brother here just did by referring to one verse, he didn't pay any attention to the verses I had brought up, which clearly are potentially conflicting, but it means that you need to understand what and how oath ought to be administered. Okay? Now, I can say very clearly that, look, if you are going to take the Quran as the basis for understanding, yeah, then I would equally want to take the Bible as a basis for understanding. And on, and in that regard, I said to Arul very clearly that according to the Bible, it may, it's, it's very clear. I read the statement from the Bible that God deceives. Now, if according to, one second, if according to the verses, and there's only one, there are many others we can address. But what I would not, I would not want to do, as Arul has done, is just take one, sometime totally out, and he did refer to the context, totally out of context. I do know one thing, that if we have a detailed discussion, subject matter chosen and subject matter will be abided by rather than what Arul did quickly, came here and changed the whole goalpost. I forgive him for it anyway. Yeah. At the end of the day, I can have with you, Arul, a detailed discussion, debate, call it what you want, on a subject matter, and I can confidently assure you, you will agree with me that the Bible ought not to be the book collectively as guidance for humanity. So, shall we? I, one second, if I can just... Yeah, so, what I want you to do, Arul, agree with me a particular topic and don't change it midway. I yeah? did not change no, it. No, you changed it totally when you came. Nature, no, no, moral no, no, nature no, no, of no, God, no. and I Arul, specifically Arul, chose... Arul, go on, I let you go. agreed legal elements. The video is up. Yeah. And you, you can take, check out the video. No, and that's nature of God. You, and that's nature one of, of God no, 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 is an expression no, I used. No. I said it should have been a collective one. Yeah, I'll tell you why, brother. Yeah. You see, Sammy, he went I specific. The I, I, honestly, I can take this and ride with it whole day. I don't want that. We Shall want to come no to a common so, understanding. Worst case, yeah? worst case, there has been what? a misunderstanding. Possibly. No, no worst case. But best no case. misunderstanding. You change the goal That I disagree with. Morality. Torah versus Sharia, nature of God, Yahweh versus Islamic Allah are the statements 
all the expressions I used. You can check up the video later. But the, if, if you have a grievance there, I'm willing to concede by saying, you know what, in a communication between human beings, there is a chance that things could have been misunderstood. I am willing to have a more detailed sort of definition this time. But just to quickly add, let's read this. What, what, is, what does Yahweh say? Ezekiel 14, 8, 9, 10. I will set my face against that man and make him a sign and a proverb. I will cut him off from the midst of my people. This is in regards to the one you think Yahweh intends to deceive. What does God say? I am going to judge him. Even before you get to verse 9, he's talking about him judging him. I, I'm going to cut him off. Um, um, then you shall know that I am Yahweh. And if the prophet is induced to speak anything, I, the Lord, have induced that prophet. And I will stretch out my hand against him and destroy him from among my people Israel. So this is a dealing with this is the dealing with false prophets. I am willing, next time, if you wanted to get into the details of this, I am willing to I am willing to debate this in detail. But that is what we find here. But respectfully, Shabir, no, no, no. You are being unjust and unfair again. Look, I am going to I am going to make this very simple and then and then we will discuss it. Very quickly, I said to you, God deceives. I read the verse. What, one that's, second. One that's second. not even a full verse. Yeah, one second, one second. That's just two words. One second. Whether there is context to it, whether there is X, Y, and Z reason for why God was justified, because that's what you are effectively saying. God was justified in deceiving. My view is simple. I'm just asking one second. All I asked was, did God deceive? Yes or no? Oh, oh, uh, Shabi, 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 excuse me, Shabi. <laughs> by, I, I would be extremely surprised if what you were trying to do by picking two words in an entire statement is similar to what I did. When you, did you brought, that? when you brought in the idea of duress, you, you when you I'm brought so it, when you brought in the idea of duress, I was willing to expand on the context, get into the fact that this has to deal with Muhammad with a couple of his no, wives and so on. That is, I was willing to expand on the context, which you weren't willing to do. Shabir, Shabir, do you have an answer for the... Shabir, okay. Shabir, Arul, Arul, Arul. Forget all that. You are speaking to Shabir. I'm telling you now, listen. Let's just quickly agree. We need to drive... I know, I know. You need to go a long way. Let's agree on a subject matter and don't move the goalpost next time. I did not move. Yes, you I disagree with you. Yes, you did. That's fine. I said legal elements right across. New Testament. Check out. Check out. Check out. Check out. the New Testament? New Testament. I will tell you precisely what Jesus says in regards to oaths. I can tell you that. It doesn't matter. It was a wonderful No problem, inshallah. Look, anything on two words that you do, forgive me, that was not the intention. No, 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 neither. What we do? Neither. No, no, no. Not at all. Not at all. But what we do, next time we have, let's talk on the Bible and the Quran in the context of what the Creator is. Remember, not the Creator. It's a very, very wide area. We have done this already. Even the last time. Okay, I Check out your video. I already mentioned this is a wide area. Next time, can you speak to the Torah? And the Quran. No, choose a couple of specific. I'm answering already. Okay, go ahead. Choose a couple of specific attributes, okay. and they in themselves are oceans. And that is why my suggestion is any uh, if you if, if you want to exchange contact details, absolutely, that's wonderful. Perfect. So Thank we can precise to well done. Way, so we can precisely even describe the wording. Thank you. The proposition. Give me the thing, and we'll agree with it, and then we'll put it up so everybody knows. In that way, nobody can think we are playing. Let him write it down. <laughs> Ask him to sign it. Oh, no. No, no. Because I saw that video. He did not use the word Bible. He kept repeating the word Tanakh. Tanakh. This is why. Uh, what is the Tanakh made of? And today he backs off. Such is his scholarship. Yeah. So shall I give you my? Uh, yeah. Oh, that's fine. Email. Yeah. Give me that.